What up? How you doing? Pretty good. How about you? Good. So, um, doesn't look like anyone's here yet, but yeah, just this is my friend Brandon. Uh, he runs the page I Am Earth. Uh, yeah. Taurus, uh, Virgo, and Capricorn. He also runs I Am Fire and uh, I Am Water and I Am Air, all those. But I feel like um, I Am Earth gets a lot, a lot of special attention from you because it's uh, your. <laughs> yeah, and I also boosted from when I had my other page. So it was easier to get the uh, the Taurus people involved. Yeah. <laughs> so that helped. That helped. And I said, so today we're talking about Uranus and moving into Taurus. Uranus. 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 <laughs> it just sounds better. It, hey, Mike. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna call it Uranus. You sure we'll call it Uranus? That sounds like we're trying hard, trying too hard though. <laughs> I'm gonna try hard. I don't care. <laughs> All right. So, Uranus. All right. Uranus. It's not hard to say. Okay, so I wanted to talk. Um, wanted to talk about uh, quickly the overall energy of Uranus and Taurus since we have a couple people in here right now. One second. So um, Uranus and Taurus, basically you have to think about what Uranus does and what the sign of Taurus is about. So Uranus is basically the planet of uh, rebellion and innovation, upheaval, Sudden and drastic change, uh, progression, social progression, and the like. So, um, basically, Uranus is just changing. It's not like Pluto. Pluto's more, you know, deep and, uh, you know, total upheaval, drastic transformation over a long period of time. Whereas Uranus is very sudden, striking. It's like a, you know, a bolt of lightning. Um, very unexpected things happen when Uranus is involved, um, whether it's by personal transit or by, you know, just universal transit into a new sign, whatever. It's just electric. It changes everything. So um, with Uranus and Taurus, Taurus is all about stability, financial and otherwise. Uh, it's much, if you think about, you know, the zodiac as like the progression of a human life or, you know, one, one sign building on the next, Aries is this initial burst of energy we just had this Uranus in Aries transit, which really just caused everybody to really embrace the part of themselves that's super, um, you know, independent, stepping out on their own. We saw a lot of, you know, entrepreneurship and a lot of, um, you know, coming out, coming into your own in just a variety of different ways. Independence is huge during Uranus in Aries. And now... Definitely. And it's, it's going to also, like, take people... Uh, who have a hard time changing and it's going to really uh, give them some unsettling energy to like give them that extra push. Some people are just stuck in their ways, just like, you know, Taurus and you know, that this transit is supposed to give them freedom, give them freedom of that, of that thought, give them something new and a new perspective to actually become that. Yeah. So some people are naturally good at that, but us Taurus, you know, we need that extra push. Yeah. <laughs> Taurus um, should be interesting for Taurus because it's kind of the antithesis of everything that Taurus stands for. <laughs> Taurus doesn't like sudden change. They don't like drastic upheaval generally. Um, and, you know, actually it's going to be really interesting for all the fixed signs because it's going to be making um, harsh aspects to all the fixed signs. So, you know, fixed signs in general don't like to change their stance on anything. They really like, um, they can be kind of set in their ways. So Uranus is going to be doing some interesting things um, for those signs. But now that, um, yeah. 
do it. I was going to say, oh, oh, go for it, go for it. I was just saying, I was just uh, expanding on the, you know, Uranus and Aries and what it's doing now. That it's oh, yeah. Yeah, so what are some like key things that we went through these last seven years, you think? Well, um... You know, people just people just went kind of kind of nuts down here on this and Aries. People were breaking free and coming out on their own in a variety of different ways with Uranus and Aries. Um, we kind of dove deep into some technology, you know, uh, from between now and then, like just the way social media has grasped everybody's attention mm -hmm. and how we're just so deep. We became so deeply involved in, you know technology itself it's almost like we forgot what's going on out here you know and take a breath mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah we might see we might see a nice step back from that where technology is still going to be a part of us but uranus is going to help us break free and give us freedom from that as well right yeah yeah definitely it, it might even be a little bit of a it might even be a little bit of a slower pace, but, you know, more inspiration, if, if that makes any sense, you know. Uranus and Aries was, was just, like, breaking out, and um, yeah. then, like, you know, Uranus and Taurus. It might be a little bit of a slower pace, but more inspiration in the things that we kind of take slow. Because Uranus is very inspiring as well. It's... um. You know that revolutionary planet and that you know revolution doesn't come without that inspiration so it's really just shaking everything up mm -hmm. yeah and i i think like you know taurus is the sign of like possessions and materials so you have like those two counteracting forces right there mm -hmm. so i i do i'm just curious to see because i know i just know how the generation generations coming uh, no not nothing but technology it seems like they just grew up with a cell phone in their hand right <laughs> and it's becoming a part of part of them but I feel like that energy is gonna shake it up quite a bit and it might it might stir up their whole their whole perspective on what this stuff is and they might reject it somewhat and try and come back into something more natural mm -hmm. or who they are it makes a lot of sense so, you know a little more about this than I do. I want to go over, like, the history of Uranus and Taurus and what has happened previously during Uranus and Taurus transits. Well, I know we spoke earlier, and you actually brought it up to me, was uh, the gold rush. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that, because that's, that's two times ago. That was, what, 18, 1848? To 1855 or something like that so to me that that's the economic that's the financial rush the the jolt of Uranus jumping right into everybody and everybody rushed to the west discovered all kinds of lands people got rich and uh, it was pretty much a mess after that but <laughs> it was just insanity but something I'm a little bit more familiar with was uh, the last time was 1934 to, I believe, 1942. The That was like, the Great Depression started in 1929, but then you had this transit occur in 1934, which is almost midway through that Great Depression. So during that time, that's when America and around the world, everybody was like trying to change everything that they were doing, trying to evolve and grow and get out of this slump the whole world was in. But then along came also World War II, which was kind of the boost at least America needed. Uh, around the world, there was upheaval, but America actually was able to get a bunch of loans from everybody and become this economic superpower through war. Um, and, then, and then use that as a catalyst to become where we are today, pretty much. Um, we also had that stock market crash, Black Monday, um, which pretty much turned everybody who had money invested and thought they were doing something, they all went broke. Everything went broke. Banks went downhill. 
So it brings me to like wonder, you know, what's coming now. I don't think nowadays we're in that same position. I don't feel like it's it's like an evil transit or like it it, it means that something bad's going to happen. But I feel like we're gonna have a similar effect, but with a different era. Uh, like nowadays, we're already seeing. Uh, I don't know how many people are involved, but our stock markets are already kind of transitioning into what's known as uh, cryptocurrency. Yeah. And there's all these regulations and things occurring right now in that field just because of how much it affects our economic system we have now and how much freedom it gives everybody. Mm -hmm. It's such a different vibration because nobody nobody has central control over that currency. So that has like a very Uranus power to it. it. It allows financial freedom across the world to every single person. So a lot of third world countries are utilizing that technology to, to make money uh, more than their governments allow. So they're kind of breaking free uh, through using that. But Wall Street and big government is putting regulations on it right now, trying to hold it back. But I think that's something to look forward the next seven years. I don't think they're going to be able to stop it forever. They're just slowing it down right now. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, cryptocurrency is definitely, I think, going to come into, going to be a topic during Uranus and Taurus. It's also... Um, like I think anything that has to do with the financial, financial security, you know, how we build our resources, how we handle our resources, the kind of money, like we talked about, you know, cryptocurrency, but I feel like we're going to go do kind of be experiencing kind of an overhaul of the way we do finances universally. So there can be, you know, ups and downs in regards to, you know, personal finances uh, in regards to the stock market. Um, and I, I was, I was thinking about, you know, how there's been this big push for, uh, you know, higher minimum wage and, um, you know, there's been a lot of talk of things like, what is it called when you like, there's like a, it's like everybody gets a certain amount per month or something like that. Uh, that is like social or not socialism. Is it socialism or? Communism. <laughs> no, that's not basically. Like, you no, know, there's like a certain name for this particular thing. Um, it's a yeah, it's kind of socialism, but it's a everybody gets a certain amount per month, and that what the idea is that it encourages people to, um, you know, because they don't have this necessarily like financial insecurity, they would then be able to. Oh, um, yeah, it's called a stipend, but if there's some kind of name for the whole practice, I don't know. I think some countries are already doing it. I have to look into it a little more. But there's been a lot of talk of um, that kind of thing, you know, giving everybody a basic, um, you know, universal living, you know, living expenses so that they can then not experience this financial insecurity and um, it would encourage entrepreneurship and stimulate the economy. That's the idea. But this is all coming, you know, this has all been kind of coming up for conversation. We've got some um, people, yeah, if robots take over. That's what, that's something else I've been, under, uh, I've been thinking about is that, you know, a lot of jobs are being replaced by robots. A lot of them. Like I used to work in um, the banking industry. A lot of my job was totally, yeah, base income. That's right. That, that sounds right. Um, but uh, I used to work in the banking industry, and basically it was like, um, you know, so much of my job was already being replaced by the time I left. Like, you can deposit, yes, universal basic income. That's right. Thank you. Um, so much of my job was already being replaced. You can deposit checks through your phone now. You know, there's even someone who actually uh, made a robot lawyer. And it, the idea is that these people can have access to, um, you know, a, you know, help from the law. They can get a lawyer 
that's a computer and it, it's free and it just it'll help your case um it'll basically do your case for you i don't really know how it works but it's there's some things that only people can really do but you know robots and um, artificial intelligence is getting smarter and smarter and more and more self-aware <laughs> Um, there's a lot of stuff yes. that's going to be replaced by robots very soon. So, um, speaking of which, uh, technology and like robots and stuff like that, I feel like we've we've made a, a big step with like virtual reality, and uh, towards being sensual, I feel like we're going to start incorporating other things like touch, and smell, and other and other things like that, and kind of bring technology to life and almost. A, a very sensual way, something that's real, real. You feel it on every sense. Right, right. And we, uh, I mean, I was watching this Vice thing recently. <laughs> that's basically about, you know, um, uh, virtual reality porn, <laughs> which sounds very, <laughs> very Uranus and Taurus to me. Um, yeah. You can go anywhere in the world with some of these, uh, this VR technology and uh, experience all kinds of crazy things. Yeah. Well, with uh, your honest being like, I'd say like head of like space travel and whatnot, what do you think like actually getting somewhere and like start farming? like going to Mars or like and like attempting to create a foundation there and and plant. I know we've been trying or maybe we have and nobody's talking about it, but actually being able to grow outside of our earth. Uh, I don't know that that's gonna be happening during Uranus and Taurus necessarily. <laughs> might we might make um might make some really drastic steps towards it. I mean, it makes sense, being that Taurus is, you know. That'd be interesting, yeah. but. It'd be really interesting. I mean, we, we're gonna have a space force soon. <laughs> yeah. Do you hear about the space uh, force? No, no, what's that? Yeah, it'd be really interesting if we could at least have a Mars landing, Michael. Like, yeah, yeah, even yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah, even. Yeah, that creating place. a a foundation of some sort. Mhm. Mm exploring. Just actually freaking in getting there. Do <laughs> that actually freaking getting there would be nice, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. But once you do, you got to create a foundation because I doubt you're coming back. <laughs> Well, so you got to be ready to like grow and build and I mean that's what they're doing and that's what they've been doing is training people to live there because they're not coming back after that. Oh, like how are you going to land there and, you imagine that's and make it back? Sacrifice? <laughs> Basically they I think they took people or what I've seen um, within the last few years was people just signing up for this and basically like NASA promises to take care of their family or something like that. Wow. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I was looking at that. I wasn't going to do it, but I was like, whoa, listen, <laughs> you got nothing better to do. Go, go try to make it to Mars. You got nothing better to do. Like what you, you have to be like, uh, you know, an astronaut when you have to have some, well, you have to go through all the extensive training. It's like years and years of training. And then, yeah. So they actually want to like put people up there like a colony or something. They want to start, colonizing mars yeah wow that is amazing. i imagine trying to make it back after you get there would be a pain in the ass because you don't have a space you know station to tell you when to like go and like unless <laughs> your communication's on point and you got that much gas and a, a second rocket because rockets you usually leave most of their body behind mm -hmm. after it shoots off right First death on Mars, Pluto <laughs> and Aries. Oof. That's funny. That, that kind of stuff freaks me out. That freaks me Way out. Way to go. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, probably though. That freaks me out. <laughs> that first they already chose these people from Mars. Who? Oh my god, that's so trippy. I was actually okay. I was watching. This is a little off topic, but I was watching this thing yesterday. I was watching these YouTube videos about what people are going to look like in the next, um, you know, however many years. You know, they went out as far as a hundred thousand years. Um, but basically, they're saying that basically, you know, it's all about adaptation. It's not about becoming more attractive, taller, um, you know, stronger, nothing. It's all about adapting to our environment. So, like, we could, a lot of these videos were saying that, first of all, redheads are dying out. Yeah, um, a lot of that's what they're saying. People at least. are going to be shorter and fatter in the future. Um why do you think that is? Like, why? Why is it going? Why are those like the dominant traits? Well, they said they said in the video because um, statistically, women who have lots of children are, you know, shorter and stouter. So, you know, the more children you have, the more your DNA is going to be out there, and the more children they're going to be having, you know. So, uh, you know, it makes sense. So, they said that so tall people need to start breeding ASAP. Do what? I said tall people need to start breeding ASAP. <laughs> it's, it's, it's curious, though. Like, yeah, well, eventually it would just be like one general type of human being just because it's going to mix all together eventually. Or is there just going to be too many combinations right now to actually make that happen? Because, I don't know. I mean... A lot of people are still pretty biased. I guess if the, just the way the lands are disconnected right now, and I mean, that's a hundred thousand years, I can't even say. Yeah. Um, who knows if we'll even be living on planet Earth at all in a hundred thousand years? Could be a desolate right. nuclear wasteland. We're getting to Mars this year, this freaking transit, we're doing it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but yeah. The reason I mention all that is because they're actually talking about if we were able to move um, humans to Mars. And so uh, they were talking about moving humans to Mars, and they actually said that because Mars uh, receives less sunlight, that, you know, human eyes would be bigger, like orb-like, and uh, in order to allow more light in from the sun. So that, that would be... Um, we're also lighter, aren't we? We're, we're going to weigh less up there because uh, it's a smaller, it's a smaller planet, right? Yeah, they said that. So it's going to have a, it's going to have a less, less gravity. So I wonder that would like weaken our bones. They said, um, they were saying that you know people would be taller on Mars regardless of what's happening here. They said that people would be taller on Mars because of. Uh, you know, less gravity, so you, your spine would naturally, like, elongate, and you just you have taller people up there. But as far as, you know, um, our breeding habits right now, you know, they'd be shorter and stouter. So there's a lot of really interesting things. We, a human race has already changed so much. But, um, anyway, I wanted to, uh, talk about, uh, how it might affect people on a personal level and what we can really, like the kinds of things that we can expect to see and who's going to be affected the most and, and that kind of thing. So, uh, Uranus and Taurus, my father always told me to look forward to life on other planets and Earth. So geography and told me when I was 10 that global warming would destroy the Earth. Yep. That's, um... That's a real possibility. <laughs> but yeah, I think that we're definitely moving in that direction. We're actually moving, I feel like there's like a massive global shift happening. And I'm sure like people have been saying this for years and years, that there's some kind of shift happening. But like, I really feel like things are just changing. We've got this epic Saturn-Pluto conjunction and Capricorn coming up soon. Um, Uranus moving into Taurus, etc. But I definitely feel like things are changing for the entire human race in, like, a big way. This period of time is going to mark massive changes, I feel. Um, 
you know, Uranus and Taurus on a universal level, we've already talked a little bit about that. I didn't say we're all going to die out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, Uranus and Taurus is basically shaking shaking up your structures. It's, you know, also is the planet of liberation. It's going to be liberating you. So with, in Taurus, that means it's going to be liberating you in the material realm. So it's going to be liberating you financially. And that might not be just, you know, uh, all roses, you know. It's going to be liberating you through some often tumultuous circumstances. Um, for instance, uh, Uranus is, doesn't always feel very nice. You know, Pluto really hardly ever feels very nice. But Uranus can be like just kind of a jolt. Um, when Uranus uh, was in Aries, you know, I had all the, had it go over all of these personal planets of mine, um, and basically it was like I just went through some extreme and very sudden changes. Things that just happened so suddenly. I felt so um, I felt so independent and like just rebellious, and I just wanted to break out of the the confines of my current reality. And it wasn't so much that I knew Uranus was in Aries and I was supposed to be feeling all of this. Like, I was really just starting to study astrology um, during this time. So it was really, my, me really, um, getting me deep in the study of astrology was kind of a, a byproduct of my Uranus and Aries transit, you know, over my sun, over my Mercury. So, you know, Uranus just really... Um, change things up for me, change my entire life circumstance. I became, well, you know, Pluto also was wearing my son, so I really changed drastically. But I feel like Uranus really gave me that burst of energy and that, you know, the feeling of rebellion that enabled me to make those changes and to make them really fast and, um, and just without being, without having all these, without looking back, you know, just plunging forward with that sense of rebellion, that sense of, like, knowing what I need to do and that it needs to be for me and that, you know, I'm not going to be oppressed anymore, you know? Um, so that's what, that's what kind of happens to me with, like, Uranus and Aries. Um, Uranus is just all about that rebellion. With Uranus moving in Taurus, it's, it can definitely be tumultuous. Those, the liberation that happened to me in Uranus and Aries is not without a very tumultuous difficult circumstances, you know, I was, there was like a lot of pressure, I felt nuts for a little while, but, <laughs> and, um, the changes that you can expect aren't going to just be easy and, and wonderful, and, you know, you're not just going to suddenly have a surrounding business, you're going to make a lot of money, you know, and you do it. It will happen, you're going to be financially liberated, but it's going to come through circumstances that, um, so you, this is, it needs to change. I, I mean, can't live like this. Anymore. Right. You can't live like this anymore. You can't live like this anymore. And, and I feel like it's also, uh, like you said, it's not. It's not going to be quick either because it's in the Taurus field. So it's going to be more of like new ideas of how to create a long term, a long term change for who you are in your life. So so different things like. Uh, in investing and um, just basically creating a, a new path for yourself, a new foundation for yourself in general, and and releasing from the old one. Mm -hmm. So it's not, yeah, I want it to be like a, a quick financial change for anybody, but those who uh, go with the flow and change with, you know, what's given in front of them. And, and start moving their energy in that direction, they're going to find it easier to to spark something in their favor. Right. Now those, those who don't change are probably going to meet up with some chaos, and you know how that goes. Right. I've, um, I've talked about that quite a bit, how the way to deal with your transits is by embodying the energy of the planet that is, you know, transiting your chart. So... People tend to act as though when you have a transit, it's happening to you, and it's doing these things to you, and blah, 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 it's terrible, you know, Neptune, Pluto, Uranus, ah. 
yeah. Saturn. <laughs> they just get so freaked out by these planets. You know, you are the planets. The planets are just a reflection of what's happening inside of you already. So the key right. to dealing with these, uh, okay, so the key to dealing with your honest transit is to change. When you feel that change happening, when you feel that liberation coming on, embody that and embrace it and, and do it. Don't don't wait for something to happen to you because guess what? If you let it happen to you, it's going to be bad and it's going to be uncomfortable and you're not going to yeah. like it if it happens to you. If you uh, do it on your own and you consciously embody these changes and you embrace them, that's when you're going to be making the most of your honest transit. I mean, you will come out, you know, liberated regardless, <laughs> but it's going to be more uncomfortable if you don't consciously work with that energy. Right. And that's like a really good point, especially uh, to a lot of the uh, people who enjoy astrology I see out here is like, they, they assume like when there's a certain transit and you were, you were just saying, I'm just going to say it from a different perspective, I guess, is that it's like, that's what's happening to me out here. Like, this is this is really attacking me right now and all this energy is being put on me. But everything's connected even beyond our solar system. So the alignment happening out there is just a picture of what's already being reflected from shit way down the line. Because mm -hmm. we're not, you know, our solar system is connected with everything else. That's what these outer planets are famous for bringing closer to us showing us the reflection of kind of what's happening out there farther and then you know as we get closer you know it, it, it's more personal but that's what i see a lot of people making mistakes is, is fearing the way these these planets move instead of just noticing where they're at and what you know how you can work with that how you can work with the reflection of yourself that's already occurring because it's already happening and it already did happen you just have to realize how to move how to let go and how to take control over you know all of these emotions and things in your life without getting too personal about it people make all these things so personal but it's just happening right you know yeah it's cyclic it's cyclic. It's just another life cycle. When Uranus moves into a different sign and it affects a different part of your chart, it's not victimizing you. It's just part of your life cycle. And it might be one that you didn't expect and one that you didn't plan for and one that you didn't want. But guess what? It was all in here the whole time. It was all right here. So... I was a little nervous right. coming into my seventh house and then Gregor's... I'm hoping to get engaged. Hi, Emma. Lee. Emma. <laughs> Lee. <laughs> I did that in the last live broadcast with her. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be nervous, uh, Petunia. Again, like like we were just saying, it the the key is to embody that energy. So if you see that if you're you know in a relationship and you're wanting to be engaged, um Whatever changes that you see are necessary in your relationship, even if they're drastic, even if they feel uncomfortable, but you know that the pressure is just building in that direction, you're going to need to embody those changes. Um, and, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to make a prediction about what's going to happen to you during this time, but it, it could be that, you know, that's not going to happen. It could be that, you know, you're going to be breaking free of, um, you know, certain relationships. In fact, I would guess that with Uranus in your seventh house, um, there's a huge likelihood, not necessarily even with your romantic relationship, but in general, you're going to be breaking free of a lot of relationships that are weighing you down in some way. And you're going to be more inspired. You're going to be more inspired as to, you know, how you handle relationships, more inspired within your relationships, um, might really want to be taking on a new way of looking at relationships. You know, some people, something that comes to mind is, you know, opening your relationship under your honest transit, um, just changing it in some way, doing something that seems off the beaten path that a lot of people might not be accepting of, um, within your relationships, but it's necessary for you, and you just know that it's moving in that direction, and by, in doing so, you know, 
you can embody that change instead of letting that change happen to you. Yeah, and that's that's what Uranus transits will do. Um, for me, when Uranus Uranus just ended its transit through my tenth house, I was never someone who gave a lot of concern to um, what people thought of me. But you know, I it was more that I didn't want to step out of my little shell. I didn't want to step out of my box. Um, I just, I just wanted to kind of live under the radar. I didn't want to shake things up. I didn't want to assert on um, popular opinions. I just, I just didn't want to put myself in the limelight too much. When Uranus entered my 10th house, things changed pretty drastically and quickly. Um, I didn't, I didn't give a crap what anybody thought of what I had to say. In my opinion is my opinion. You know, you know, Uranus is really rebellious. It was all happening in a very public way. I just didn't care. And I left a long-term relationship. I was, it was a very long time. So it seemed to be a very solid relationship at the time. I left that relationship because um, it, it was not serving me. And I, it was one of those things, and this is getting real personal, but it's like one of those things that I really felt something was going to change. It was changing. I couldn't stop it. I wanted it to change, but I didn't know how to make it change. And honestly, I didn't embody the energy of Uranus consciously. I knew it ended up kind of sending me a whirlwind. It was, it was insane. The way everything happened because I did not embody the energy of Uranus consciously. And it was just, it seemed to be happening to me. But that was because I wasn't making the things that I knew that I needed to make. It was really just nuts. So it was really liberating me, liberating me from that relationship, it liberated me from the perception that people had of me as, you know, this person is no longer in a relationship. It really, um, uh, someone who really had a lot of, you know, old-fashioned values and things like that. People just stopped seeing me that way because I came out of my shell and I, I let you know, myself be seen, even with all the weirdness that, you know, that you're on it. I was talking earlier. This is Kendra's limelight right now. Do what? <laughs> I was talking to Sandra. Oh. <laughs> I was saying, I said I was talking earlier, but this is like Kendra's field right here. She, <laughs> he, she kills it right here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, he's just he's just there for you to look at his pretty face. I was, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he's just sitting there like, <laughs> I'm adorable. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. Yeah, I just I just came for the attention. He just came he just came for the attention. He just came to, <laughs> came to look look pretty and be looked at. Yeah. I'm just here to fill things out. See if it's got if anybody brought any food. You know, free things. Free. Anybody got good sales on something? Free things. See all the funky food trends. Yeah. Oh, that'll be fun. Oh my gosh. That'll be really interesting too. Okay, virtual food that you can taste. <laughs> wow. That would actually be nuts. That would be cool. That would be absolutely nuts. But it also make me mad. Why? Because it doesn't like fill you that up. Doesn't, that doesn't go straight to your hips. What's, what's bad about that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my stomach's gonna be like, yeah, this is a lie. Everything about this is a lie. I can't do this. <laughs> this is a lie. It's a lie. <laughs> well, we need a direct technology that makes you feel like you just ate, even though you you just ate nothing. I ima I imagine you have to like take like a pill first or something, <laughs> and it makes you feel full, and then you eat your virtual food to like trick your brain. Wow, this is how everybody's just going to be messed up. That's not good. <laughs> we don't need to do this. It's like the Willy Wonka thing where you had the gum that made, like tasted like a three-course meal, and then it turned you into a big-ass blueberry. Yeah, that did always bother me. Like, how 
couldn't <laughs> actually taste the food, or like yeah, you couldn't actually like you couldn't actually get full on it, but you tasted it. That did kind of bother me. Yeah, virtual food with zero calories. That would be really interesting. See, I didn't even think really about um, the implications for food. Perhaps because that's not where my mind is constantly, Emily. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> Emily. <laughs> you burrito. <laughs> burrito eating ass. Um, but yeah. Well, definitely could. You would think maybe like a lot of like uh, of. I would expect like veganism to even get bigger. Oh yeah. Through that time. Yeah, I think we're definitely uh, so it's, trending towards veganism as a society, anyway. On that. I feel. Uh, and then probably some new, unique, newer diets as well. Yeah. I don't know what else we can come up with, but <laughs> we have so freaking many. Have you ever heard of this? New ways to that... eat energy. Like they literally don't eat. Like they photosynthesis type shit where they sit in the sun and they absorb that. I've, I've read that. No. Uh, it's like universal energy. Like literally. They feed on energy. And it, yeah, maybe it is. Maybe it's the same thing. But like the way they described it and the thing that I watched was like they literally feed on energy and they don't eat at all they're basically anorexic sounds like some scorpio shit no i'm just playing what? <laughs> i said it sounds like some scorpio shit <laughs> yeah, so these people okay i saw this video and they literally don't eat they don't eat real physical food they like feed on energy or whatever and they basically like they just like, I guess it's kind of like meditation or something. They just feed on um, this energy and then they had kids. And so now they, yeah, like vampires. <laughs> so they, now they eat like just to experience that with their children. But you look at them, it's mostly they don't eat at all. They just only eat when they really want to experience something specific with their kids. And then like you look at them and they're totally healthy. They're, they're thin. Yeah, that's it. Breathitarians. Yeah, breathitarians. That's exactly what it is. So they look totally healthy. They look thin, but not like abnormally thin, not like crazy, like, wow, you really need to eat something. Like, they look like healthy, normal people. Like, you would never think that they don't eat. It makes me hungry just thinking about that. There's no way. It makes me angry, too. Cause... I don't even, I don't understand how it's physically <laughs> possible. <laughs> but I don't know, Michael. That is a good question. Mm. Well, then, I guess we have to ask that. I didn't, the, I mean, is anybody, I, I wonder if anybody in the groups yeah. are breathitarians. <laughs> Do what? I said, I wonder if anybody in the group is one of those. I'm, I would be really Breathe. interested to meet a breathitarian. So if you are, <laughs> let us know. Yeah. And um, also answer Michael's question. Very, very deep and insightful, thought-provoking question that he has. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure. Well... If they live off energy, then yes, they would definitely eat that because that's like a lot of energy to consume right there. Do what? <laughs> I'm on Michael's question still. Okay. <laughs> I don't know Very what insight. Said, Joe. I'm just I'm just saying what they said. They said that they said they literally don't eat anything. Huh? I know I'll die after like a day, so there's no way. If I miss if I miss lunch, dude, my my life is over. If you miss lunch, yeah, yeah, I need to eat too. I feel like that's because I'm not very um, self disciplined. Like, I mean, I probably could go without eating at all if I would just like, you know, control myself. <laughs> So 
there anything we haven't touched on, like, what could potentially happen? I feel like we didn't really get a whole lot. I didn't feel like we really didn't get a whole lot into how it could affect people personally. Ah, uh, yeah, keep going. Yeah, I get hangry. I do. Definitely. I also, if I don't get hangry, okay, we'll get we'll get to the personal things right after I answer that. If I don't get hangry, then I just like kind of lose focus on everything. I can't think straight. I just be at work, kind of just going. I have to work off habits and instinct at that point. If I don't eat, there's no new ideas. Nothing great coming out of me when I'm hungry. I'm just kind of moving. But uh, transits. So. Or were we talking about houses? We could talk about that a little bit. But um, Uranus and Taurus is basically going to be kind of upsetting. Like, wherever Taurus falls in your chart is going to be kind of where you feel like this sense of um, security, where you feel like this sense of... Um, it can be a place where you feel pretty, like, grounded. You know, I'm, a, I'm a little tipsy at this point, but... It's like, you know, the, Taurus is all about the material, the, you know, financial, you know, your resources, your physical, material, tangible resources. Um, it's, you know, building on Aries, which is that burst of energy. Taurus says, okay, that's cool. Let's build on it. Let's stabilize it. It's funny, we've got an Aries and a Taurus on this um, broadcast. <laughs> but Taurus is about, like, stabilizing what Aries kind of put out there. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's great, Emily. Uh, the detachment from what we thought was security. It's really kind of reshaping what we define as uh, security and how we like, um, what makes us feel secure. It's helping us break away from our routine, things that made us feel comfortable and kind of define a new way of being comfortable, a new way of, um, I, I find a new sense of like safety, I guess. Um, I think a lot of yeah, you think there'd be like some kind of do what? some kind of like security within the chaos of it all, yeah. within the change. Like that's going to be more comfortable than you know the status quo of just like kind of being at home, like just sitting still. Almost is going to be it's going to feel better moving. It's right. going to be feel more comfortable right. becoming different. Right, right. Experiencing um, the stillness experiencing the stillness. So, um, yeah, definitely reshaping how you define security and um, becoming more comfortable. Becoming more these people want chaos. These people want to know about the houses. They want to know 8th house, Joe. Joe wants to know 8th house, and Jennifer wants to know 11th house. Okay. 8th house. Um, so you're honest in the 8th house. <laughs> Um, Uranus in the 8th house, so 8th house is about, you know, first of all, you know, sex, intimacy, uh, close personal relationships. I think of the 8th house as really anything that entangles you with other people. So that's about, you know, that's sex, that's um, money, that's uh, shared resources, it's, you know, all, of course it's the taboo, the occult, etc. So Uranus in the 8th house is bringing a lot of like inspiration to this area of your life. You, on a very basic uh, level, you might be feeling like a lot of kind of inspiration in regards to your sex life or discover new kinks, become, you know, more comfortable expressing certain um, taboo or strange parts of your sexuality, be able to kind of um, come into your own and express those. A little Dang, more. Joe. <laughs> as far as uh, as far as you know, other people's resources and the financial aspect of the eighth house, there can be a lot of insecurity here, at least at first. Of course, the end uh, game of Uranus is to liberate you. So, I'm not saying that it's going to be a bad transit for you, but you know, Uranus in the eighth house can definitely cause some ups and downs in regards to. Um, you know, debt, it can, um, it can make you kind of have to repay, repay some debts or have things happen that um, cause you to, you know, 
for instance, say that you are financially entangled with someone, you owe money to someone, you might have to repay that very suddenly if, you, if there's been a lot of shady things uh, that have gone on in the past and you're you know, entangled uh, financially with a person or people who are, who are shady, um, that could be very dangerous. <laughs> um, it could definitely be shaking up, picking you up in the realm of being kind of like unconscious. So I wouldn't call the age house the house of the unconscious, but it is the taboo that is associated with trauma. So it can definitely be picking things up, um, you know, traumatic memories or um, things of that nature, just kind of creating a stir in the area of your life. So I would definitely say be careful when it comes to shared resources or debt of any kind. Don't take on debt that feels in any way unstable, in <laughs> any way that um, you are, don't entangle yourself with anyone that you are in any way hesitant to entangle yourself with. Um, liberate yourself in these areas, so liberate yourself sexually, sexually liberate yourself in the area of your cult, so don't be afraid to look into your darker side if there is any drama that occurs during this transit or any kind of um, crazy events that occur or kind of your of that you not consciously embodying that you're in the energy within your age house. So that means don't be afraid to step into the unknown. Don't be afraid to step into the darkness when your body the eccentric energy of your own it's within your heart so, yeah my i'm thinking it might strip you of how you identify with your surroundings as well with your surroundings uh, how, like well how you your attachments i should say your possessions how you identify with those that it might uh give you a second look at how you perceive what is yours and uh, give you a new vision of your possessive identity, your attached identity. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Um, I would say that if there's any kind of um, confusion regarding your, you know, sexual identity or anything like that, anything that you've been kind of afraid to face about yourself and who you feel you are this transit would definitely give you the um give you that kind of energy it would, it would pretty much create so much like such a stir within you that something would have to happen to um make you embody this make you accept this part of yourself and i think anything in the eighth house can be a lot more difficult i think than um a transit to another house. So Uranus in the eighth house, I think, is just really going to, it's really going to make you face things that can be very difficult. Um, well, also, I think, isn't your son, her son is there too. So yeah, it's, it's going to come to a conscious, a whole conscious level. Mm -hmm. so I really, uh, yeah, I really think that whole identity shift uh, or or at least a new perspective, you know, it, it always depends on how much work you take upon yourself, mm -hmm. you know, so as long as you're moving with it and you're understanding, you know, that flow coming with you, you're going to be able to change that. You're going to be able to process all of, all of these new energies coming into you. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, it's only as negative as you let it be because I know eighth house. Yeah. It's, it's famously known as like, you know, Pluto, the, the ruler of that is like <clears throat> it, it's just basically there to strip you of what you think you are so to have those energies and I think you said earlier in the chat that Jupiter is there as well you're just gonna have to go with that and expand on all of those changes on everything brought to you even if it might seem a little crazy or chaotic just go with that and make it work and find what works within all these different changes Did you freeze up? Yeah, I got paused. Someone called me. 
Yeah, it's, it's about embracing the change. It's about embodying the change. So, what is happening right now? I got a phone call, so I got craziness. But okay. let's do uh, Jennifer. Let's talk about her 11th house real quick, and then I got to get going. Okay. Um, so the 11th house, that's actually one that I'm about to... I'm about to experience the 11th house transit as well, actually. Um, you know, the 11th house, the house, actually, Uranus is the um, modern ruler of the 11th house. So the 11th house, I'm actually really looking forward to this transit. Um, the 11th house is the house of your group associations, the way you identify within a group setting, you know, humanitarian causes, um, the future. So, you know, innovation, uh, technology, all things having to do with Aquarius. So, um, you know, friendships, the future, technology, I already said all that. So anyway, um, with Uranus and Taurus entering the 11th house, um, first of all, like, I would say that you can expect to see some changes within your friendships and your group associations, some ups and downs. Um, if there's like friendships in your life that are for instance, friendships in your life that are, you know, weighing you down in some way, you will be liberating yourself of those friendships. And that's, it's not in the same way that Saturn might do that. That's really like, you know, you need to get rid of this person, blah, 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 blah. It's just, you know, you might encounter some new types of friendships. You might be liberating yourself from old friendships in favor of people who are more um, conducive to your growth. For instance, um, there can be a lot of, um, okay, so for instance, if you want to see Taurus, your health is also about, you know, season, sudden influx, you know, sudden, um, there can be about winning, something like that, you know, your health and your health, they're both about, um, sudden both good and bad. So, with your and your health, there can be, you know, definitely some changes in the financial situation that come kind of suddenly and they might come through your group associations or your friendships. Um, you know. With it being 11th house too, would there be, you think, something sudden possibly with like the, your community or neighbors or um, just everyone who's around you basically every day? Yeah, I think more third house when it comes to neighbors, but in general, yeah, like your identity within the group is going to change. Like your, um, you know, your position in the pack, that that might change very suddenly. Um, my mother, I think she just en en ended her Uranus in the 11th house transit. She did lose some friendships during that transit. But it was because she was liberating herself. She was liberating her mindset. There were things that were um, happening for her, things that were changing in her mind, things that were changing in her belief system that uh, basically you know, they didn't really make a lot of room for friends who weren't open-minded and friends who were uh, trying to put certain belief systems on her, people who are trying to um, impose themselves on her. She's breaking free of restrictions in which she can. So, I'm not saying all of the friends are not happening, they, you know, they all run away, they got them, you know, they, they were some friendships that were possible. And you know, I'm not even know. <laughs> but, and this is going to be so honest in the 11th house friends. So, um, I definitely expect to see ups and downs in the realm of your friendships. There can definitely be friendships to end because they're just not, they're just not enabling your growth. Um, but with Ronis and Taurus, I don't know, I'm going to be playing the lottery. I'm just going to be real with you guys. I'm going to play the lottery during this transition because this <laughs> can be like sudden winnings, you know, the 11th house. Uh, Taurus is money. Uranus is sudden events, and the 11th house is about, you know, again, those sudden events. Um, I think that Uranus in the 11th house, this is kind of at home, so I, I'm really excited for this transit personally. I think it's going to uh, 
to be a, a major overhaul here. She said, don't play with my emotions. <laughs> well, really, only one of us can win the lottery, Jennifer, statistically. So I wouldn't get my hopes <clears throat> up <laughs> if I were you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm just going to need some money or some food from whoever wins, so... <laughs> so we're gonna be that's right, Brandon. Yeah. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me too. I mean, me we too. pretty much we already we speak every day in group chat, so I mean <laughs> Yeah. We're just gonna have to like fucking I don't know, if you win the lottery, we're gonna do something. We're gonna be the first people to Mars and make it back. <laughs> okay. All right guys. I gotta get going. Yeah. All right. Guys, have a great night. Um, you know, if you have any Hopefully questions, we can do comments, this again. I'll do my best to uh, comment back. Oh yeah. All right, cool, Kendra. All right, I'll talk to you later. Talk Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.